Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie, and I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today, this is the third time I've recorded this video because I'm having a hard time exactly explaining what I want to chat about. And I want to chat about the idea that Magic the Gathering has an identity crisis right now, where they're trying to become mainstream but they're full of com their community is full of people who love the cult-like following and they're also not willing to put the work into becoming mainstream. So we're going to chat about that. We're going to do our best. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, just a quick reminder, this channel is not sponsored by anything other than myself at Game Grove. This is my local game store. Uh, you can purchase product at gamegrove.gg and patrons, you're getting $10 off of March of the Machine pre-orders right now. So uh, let's hang out and chat about this idea of mainstream versus cult-like following for Magic the Gathering. Um, it's long been discussed, the idea of, is Magic the Gathering dead? Is Magic the Gathering dying? Will Magic the Gathering ever die? And my take on this is simply put, Magic the Gathering is too big to die. And you see this in my comment section all the time. Even when people stop playing Magic the Gathering, I hear a comment all the time that says, me and my friends have stopped buying Magic the Gathering but we still play all the time, weekly, at our kitchen table, and we buy some singles or we buy whatever that we like from the new sets that it comes out. Um, and so even though people stop engaging with product, and, and you see reasons for this. I mean, listen, uh, with this new set, March of the Machine, we have not only March of the Machine and all of the product lines, the collector boxes, the set boxes, whatever, but there's also now March of the Machine Aftermath, which kind of feels like they, they took one set and they just like made more out of it in, in order to kind of spread the the volume around and, and make more product for us to purchase. And this results in people having product fatigue and we've talked about that a lot. So, um, but Magic the Gathering, in my opinion, won't die. It, it's always gonna be around. It's always gonna have some form of following. The question in my mind is, does Magic the Gathering ever reach its full potential? Uh, and one of the things that was discussed in the Chris Cox, Cynthia Williams, reading Wikipedia articles, fireside chat, uh, was that their goal is to move Magic the Gathering more into the mainstream. Uh, this is why you see things like Post Malone and, uh, you know, they have Magic the Gathering that's being played in this mansion in, you know, Los Angeles. And um, they want to make Magic the Gathering the cool, hip, popular thing to do. Which, listen, has great implications for everyone. Just because Magic the Gathering turns into the cool, hip, popular thing to do doesn't mean that people can't still hang out with their nerdy friends and play Magic the Gathering. Like, that's what I want to do. Um, I don't really want it to be popular, but it doesn't mean that it takes away from the community at all. Um, any more than already has with the amount of product they're producing, that kind of thing. So if they want to do that, that's fine. The problem in my mind is that they aren't doing the things in order to reach that goal. Uh, if you look at Marvel, Marvel used to be this kind of nerdy cultural thing uh, that not a whole lot of people engage with. It was comic books, it was maybe um, some movies, it, you know, sorry, not even really movies, it was, it was like comic books and it was maybe some like video game type things or some collectible type things. But then, you know, 10 years ago, they started really, really pushing the entertainment wing of Marvel. They started making tons of movies and it became this mainstream phenomenon where everybody knows Marvel. And every single week, there's a new Marvel movie that everyone is talking about and everyone is going to. And it was huge for the Marvel community. It was a big thing that um, that brought a lot more fans into the industry or into the into that community. And it, I think personally, I'm not part of that community, but I think personally it was a net positive. If you look at it from the outside, it grew the community in a big way and produced more for the, uh, the, the people who were already there in the community, it produced more for them to engage with. I think that would be the win for Magic the Gathering. If Magic the Gathering came out and, and actually moved into this kind of mainstream media cultural thing, it would provide us, all of us, people who have been here for years. Listen, I've been playing Magic the Gathering for like 10 to 15 years. I love it. I'm here. Um, you know, I have a store, whatever. It would produce a lot more for us to engage with in a bigger way. I would love I would absolutely love for there to be a Netflix show for me uh, to teach my kid about Magic the Gathering as she gets older. 
I would absolutely love that if there's a way to engage with Magic the Gathering um, in that way, to, to sit down and watch a show of my wife, right? Like, who would never sit down and play Magic the Gathering, but if they had an awesome Netflix show uh, that was engaging and well done and, uh, and cinematic and uh, the, the storyline was compelling and it was interesting, it would, it, my wife would sit down with me and watch a Netflix show and that would be a really, really cool way to engage in this hobby um, in, a bigger, in a bigger dynamic. But in my opinion, they want something, but they're not putting the energy or doing the things in order to get there. Listen, March of the Machine is the perfect scenario for this. We have this kind of ending of the storyline. We have this kind of, um, it almost feels like a Marvel movie. You've got uh, these teaming up of, of different characters that we all love. You've got this battle happening, and it almost seems like the perfect time to launch some sort of campaign or movie or you know uh, Netflix series or whatever. It seems like the perfect time to do that, but they just don't do it because it's just easier to sell boxes and to sell different things to their, their clientele that they already have. Um, and so this kind of begs the question of will Magic ever go down that route? And, and my answer is yes, they will. I think, um, I think what you're gonna see is the success of this Dungeons and Dragons movie uh, it seems to be going really well. I've only, I haven't seen it, but I've heard from a lot of people that it's really good and that people are really enjoying it. And we've seen Dungeons and Dragons pick up a lot of steam just being involved in Stranger Things. And I don't know if there was any behind the scenes negotiation or, or deal with the Stranger Things community, or if they just kind of, or, you know, the people who make the movie, the show, or if they just love Stranger, or if they just love Dungeons and Dragons, so they included it in their in their story. But it has kicked off this new passion for Dungeons and Dragons, and then the movie is going to do the same thing. You're going to see more people come into into Dungeons and Dragons than ever as a result of this movie. It's going to be a huge thing for that community, and Wizards of the Coast is going to see that, and they're going to start saying, okay do we need to move that direction? And if they pull the trigger, I think it's gonna be really, really great for the current Magic the Gathering community. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, uh, that's my perspective. Obviously, I'm, a, I'm an owner of a game store, so the idea of more people playing Magic the Gathering or seeing Magic the Gathering is a huge win for me. Uh, but I'm curious for your perspective. Do you want to see Magic the Gathering turn into uh, more of a cultural accepted phenomenon that people are excited about and talking about around the average table? Or do you like the kind of uh, cult-like following nerdy side of Magic the Gathering where it's like something that not everybody does and not everybody knows about? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Um, I think if Magic does it, it's gonna be really, really good for those who have um, collections and have uh, investments in Magic the Gathering, obviously. But even more, I think it's gonna help with the um, the firing of events and new communities and growing the game uh, from a large perspective. So anyway, be kind to the people around you. Let me know what you think. Have a great day.